Afternoon, I'm David Scott. In just a moment or so, we're going to go to a press conference from Bastrop County, expected to begin momentarily about the Hidden Pines fire that's been raging since Tuesday. Let's take to that right now. And talk a little bit about how we've addressed the fire and some of those conditions that we've uh, dealt with today. Uh, we also uh, w want to uh, reinforce some of the things that we announced this morning at the press conference. And uh, I'll ask the sheriff to be talking some about that. And then Commissioner Beckett will have some, uh, some news about uh, some things that are being provided to those who, um, who are able to get back to their homes. And then it, we'll also talk about uh, uh, possibilities of, of getting other people back in. Uh, I want to start off by saying that uh, the numbers have not changed much today. We're still at 4,582 acres in the burn footprint. We're still at 60% containment. And you say, well, that's slow progress. That was 50% last night at this time. And again, the fire operations uh, uh, director will, will help us understand what it means and why that work is going to be slow uh, for these next few days. Uh, we've had an army of workers in the field today. 250 uh, firefighters have been on the ground in the footprint of the fire today. Um, and we've had a uh, 215 utility workers uh, in that same area, uh, restringing power lines and getting the utilities uh, rebuilt. So uh, a lot of work has been in today, um, but there's a lot of work left to do. I want to ask Mr. Rose with Blue Bonnet Electric Company to come and give us a little bit of a uh, broad brush detail of what he's done and, and what his expectations are. Mark, uh, last night you announced that you thought you might have the power on tonight by 8. Is that still holding? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, on a bit of a personal note before I uh, go through the update, I spent a good part of the afternoon uh, out in the fire zone and uh, just like for example right over there at Hudson Road at Hudson and uh, Cottletown, uh, just past that ridge, they're dumping water all afternoon on hot spots. The helicopters, the Blackhawks are coming in, uh, dropping water. So uh, our, our crews are in there in zone four doing assessments. But when, when they say that there's still a danger in the area, uh, it's not theoretical. And I, I, I get it that the smoke is not there and, and, and there doesn't seem to be the presence of the big active fire. But if you're working in the area, uh, yesterday was a lot better, I mean a lot worse than today, and I only can assume that tomorrow will be even better, but uh, the, the fire command really isn't um, misleading folks when they say that there are still operations underway. With that, uh, to kind of give you a sense of what we're trying to get our arms around, we talked about zone three, that's 21 miles of line. And this is 32 miles of line. So we're talking about almost 60 miles of line that we're attempting to work, check, and get fixed in what's going to be a span of about two and a half days. Um, that's why we have so many folks uh, in the crew, crews out there. The challenge really isn't the line reconstruction, although that isn't hard. It's the trees. Uh, we're now up to 1,300 trees that we're having to either cut or, and haul out or mark to be watched later. Today, our crews removed 284 mature trees, and that means cut them down and haul them out uh, in order to make the 8 o'clock deadline. Uh, we're going to do that. Uh, now, if it's 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'll take that hit. Uh, but for this, for Zone 3, and a good portion of zone four, uh, we'll have, we should have those lights on uh, by eight o'clock tonight. Tomorrow, we'll be, we'll be down to the last 100 meters or so. It's difficult and tough to be last, but the fire determined that and no one else. Um, we feel really good about Tuesday. I can't tell you right now what time Tuesday, and I will also tell you that, that we're going to try to make close of business tomorrow for everything, but don't hold us to that. This is an extraordinary amount of work in a really short period of time, but 
I feel good about telling you that we think we'll be through with our restoration efforts uh, sometime Tuesday. If not, maybe possibly um, by tomorrow afternoon or more tomorrow evening. But this is what happens when you guess. I walked out there at 10 o'clock this morning and made my report with a 100% assessment of um, the lines and a 90% assessment by the arborist in zone three on the trees. Everybody tell me they feel good about that. And at three o'clock I'm having a meeting because in that last 10% were 80 of the biggest trees we've seen yet, but they're on the ground. Uh, and, and we'll make our deadline. So zone four is gonna be easier to work. It's 32 miles, but it's not as many poles and it's not as many trees. So we're at it, the crews are working and we hope to be out of here Tuesday for sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe close the business tomorrow. We'll let you know in the morning. Thank you, Mark. And let me just say again, uh, how much we appreciate the tremendous work that Blue Bonnet and Aqua have done uh, to prepare for us uh, to, to uh, re-enter this fire area. At this time, I want to turn this map over and show you some things that we announced this morning. I realize not everybody is on social media. You don't carry an iPhone or uh, look at your computer all day long like some of us do. So you may not know this, but uh, we were able to announce this morning that some additional area has been opened outside the fire footprint. That would be the area uh, hatched in green, cross hatched in green on the north side of the fire part of Old Antioch Road, part of Antioch Road, and part of Go To Your Trace. Uh, those, uh, those areas have been available. We talked about it last night, and entry has to be from the north. We cannot cross the fire footprint. So the, the red dots are the location of the new security checkpoints from the north. So um, uh, folks have been, many folks have been home out there uh, all day without power, but the power will be flowing here soon. And, uh, and then they, they will be there. We, uh, we, we already re-entered uh, the, the green area on the south yesterday. Now, these re-entries uh, are, are in, were possible uh, because of two things. One, outside the fire footprint, so there's no firefighting activity going on in those areas, in the green areas. The other thing is, because of the great effort of our utility providers, we have been able to get power on or expect power to be on tonight for the folks in those areas. So we wanted to get them back into their homes as soon as possible. Um, we do not, and I, I don't want you to think that we're gonna be able to be that aggressive uh, on the rest of the project. The fire is still an active fire. I drove through there today with a sheriff's deputy. I saw flames close to Park Road 1. I saw countless water drops by the helicopters, smoke, uh, I saw hundreds of workers, firefighters, and utility workers doing their dead level best. All right, that is Paul Poppy, the county judge in Bastrop County, telling us that the acreage burned remaining steady today at about 4,580 acres charred. The containment is edging up to 60%. It's been another good day with low winds. More and folks returning to their homes tonight. We also heard so from Mark Rose with the Blue with Bonnet us. Utility that saying that more power like will be restored to some neighborhoods tonight. And by today. tomorrow, Monday, this they should be down to just 100 meters still conked out. They hope to have all power restored you by can, Tuesday. So in essence, I, I really these have been a sure, good couple of days. They're making progress. Sure. But we're not out of the woods, literally, because the wind could pick up and regenerate some problems. We'll have more on all this tonight after the football game.